Okay, so let's say that we've made that, that, that jump, the pulse, to move to a new position. We, we've, we've accomplished our saccade. Now, to really accomplish the saccade, we have to keep the eye in that position. We have to keep that step. We have to maintain it. And the way this works is that as the excitatory and inhibitory burst neurons send information off to the motor neurons, they give a copy of that to a, an integrator neuron that's located in a place called the nucleus prepositus hypoglossi. This is a, is a eye position. It codes for eye position. It's going to say, oh, we've made all these saccades. Well, that means that our eye position should be in this place. So I'm going to maintain the eye position by feeding in the correct amount of excitation to these muscles and the, and the correct amount of, of uh, lowered excitation to allow these other muscles to relax. Um, and so, for example, in a step circuit from, the, uh, from this integrator center, uh, from this eye position center, there are gonna be, there's gonna be information that goes both to the abducens motor neuron that innervates the lateral rectus and also to the internuclear interneuron that innervates the contralateral medial rectus. Now, and that's gonna allow one to keep the position where you want it. Now, let's just imagine that you can get there but you can't maintain this firing discharge. You, that for some reason, this is, is weak, okay? You're, the motor neuron, is, it can't maintain it. It's possible it, the, the problem could be out in the muscle, the problem could be in the nerve, the problem could be somewhere. But for whatever reason, this step cannot be maintained. Then what happens? What happens is that one, one drifts back to neutral, okay? So there's a drift back to neutral because you can't maintain the step. And then you make a saccade again because you know that that's where you're trying to look. So that's what this looks like. There's an, a, a saccade to, to, to a location. Uh, there's a failure to maintain the fixation. There's a slow uh, relaxation back to the neutral position. Then there's a resetting saccade. And then there's the slow relaxation back to the neutral position and a resetting, nistot, n uh, resetting saccade. This is called gaze evoked nystagmus. So as you look to an eccentric target, if you keep on relaxing back to neutral and then saccading back to the place where you were, that's gaze evoked nystagmus. As it turns out, um, as, I, as I mentioned, there are more than one way to, more than one way to get gaze evoked nystagmus, and this turns out to be the most common form of uh, pathological nystagmus, not, not physiological nystagmus, uh, such as optokinetic nystagmus. So this is the most common form of pathological nystagmus, gaze evoked nystagmus. Um, and so this shows you the, gaze, the, the fact that there's this gaze evoked nystagmus also shows you the importance of actively fixating on a target. That is not a, that's not a gimme. It's not an automatic that you're able to fixate on an eccentric target. You have to maintain that fixation and it's a task. And the failure to do so gives you um, gaze of nystagmus. And that is a very common thing. So fixation is an active process and it's not an easy active process. It's a difficult active process and it can go wrong. All right, in the, in the next video, we're gonna wrap up uh, saccades by looking at the the super brainstem, uh, uh, the midbrain and forebrain control of saccades.